It's been more than 24 hours since the polls closed for the 2022 midterm election. In Idaho, the results are in. We didn't really see any surprises in not Idaho's. No. no, not in the statewide elections. Both Governor Brad Little and Senator Mike Crapo won re-election as well as the incumbent congressman. And the Republican Party maintained its hold on the state by winning all statewide offices. But there will be some new faces in state leadership. Current Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke, was elected to be the state's new lieutenant governor. Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain will be the new Secretary of State. And former Congressman Raul Labrador is going to be our next Attorney General. Debbie Critchfield, former Idaho Board of Education President, will also be the next superintendent of public instruction. You know, one statewide election outcome did sort of come as a bit of a surprise. Yeah. I remember we were standing right here last night talking with Dr. Stephanie Witt, mm -hmm. and she was saying she didn't really quite expect this, right? Idahoans voted to change the state's constitution. And although it's not technically designated as part-time, Idaho's legislature has always been known as one, a part-time legislature. Lawmakers meet every year from January until usually the end of March, sometimes into early April. Last night, voters agreed with lawmakers who want to be able to call themselves back into session with a 60% majority vote. Our Abby Davis spoke with Dr. Stephanie Witt earlier about what this means for the state. Abby? Well, Morgan and Brian, we know it's not official. We're still waiting on results from Kootenai County, but so far, 52% of Idahoans who voted agreed to this constitutional amendment. Now, some people are concerned it will cost Idahoans in more ways than one. Historically, only Idaho's governor had the power to call the legislature back into session. If there's something emergent that's happened that can't wait until the next regular session in January, the governor can summon the legislature back. In Tuesday's general election, Idahoans gave that power to the legislature as well. Stephanie Witt, Idaho politics expert at Boise State University, says it could get expensive. It costs about $30,000 a day to pay for the costs of keeping the legislature there. So each day that they're back in a special session, there's a price tag for that. Some people against the ballot measure, like Democratic Party Chair Lauren Nekachea, say granting this power to the legislature is a waste of taxpayer money. We really should only come to town if the governor and, and both chambers agree on a course of action and a plan of action. The legislature is to the right of the governor and they're fighting with each other. And now we're gonna be having, coming to town with more legislative sessions so that they can duke it out more frequently. But lawmakers in favor of the ballot measure, including House Majority Caucus Leader Republican Megan Blanksma, say the amendment gives the legislature more freedom to do the people's business. The legislature has constitutional responsibilities, just like the governor has constitutional responsibilities. And one of the legislature's constitutional um, responsibilities is budgeting the tax dollars. That ability was removed from the legislature when COVID occurred and massive amounts of dollars moved in. We don't know how often Idaho's legislature will call itself into session. But Nekachea says we might see something like Utah's legislature, which has called itself back into special session 10 times since 2020. They're calling special sessions very frequently all of the time, and it's just not the best way to run a railroad. I reached out to Governor Brad Little's office for a statement. He said, quote, I am hopeful legislators will take very seriously their new powers and limit their legislative work as much as possible to the regular session annually. Ultimately, Blanksma says it's the will of the people. It looks like the voters are, are deciding that what they want is the legislature with a majority, not just willy-nilly, but with a majority, um, can call itself back. The other part of this amendment will specify Idaho's legislature as part-time, something that Brian mentioned wasn't in the original Constitution. You know, most members have day jobs back in their home districts when they're not in regular session. And Witt says she thinks this amendment will be a burden for some of those lawmakers since they'll most likely have to travel more. And Idaho was not the only state to have a constitu constitutional amendment. We know Kentucky and Arkansas had similar measures on the ballot, although theirs failed. Another interesting part of this, Abby and Morgan, is that, you know, before it was always an agreement between the governor and the legislators, like, okay, we're going to go back into the special session. We can only talk about these certain things. Mm -hmm. But this, the legislators can say, we're going to come in and talk about these things, but the governor has that veto power still that, you know, before oh, it was yeah. kind of an agreement. Here's what we're going to talk about. You guys pass it. We're good with it. Right. They passed something this time. He could always go, you know what? I don't like that. Because he didn't call them back. It wasn't his decision. He wasn't in on that. Got it. Yeah, okay. So interesting. There's that angle. We'll see how this plays out. Okay.